Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Layout Building. In this episode, I'm going to work on adding a fascia to our N-Scale Siren Creek project layout and finishing up the bench work. I'm going to be using power tools in this episode. I'm sure a lot of you already know how to use power tools safely, but I want to say this anyway, so please bear with me. When you're using a power tool, always make sure to pay attention to what you're doing, where your hands are, and where the saw blade or drill bit or whatever part of the tool that can possibly injure you is. Always make sure that your focus is 100% on what you're doing when using a power tool. Power tools are wonderful time savers, but they have to be used properly. No model train or layout is worth getting injured over. When I edit video, I try to keep up a certain pacing to keep things moving along. That might make it look like I'm working really quickly, but that isn't the case. I leave out the boring in-between parts where I'm setting up for the next cut or to drill the next hole. When I work, I'm actually very methodical and careful, especially with power tools. Please be safe out there. Our N-Scale Siren Creek layout is designed to be small enough that Nicole and I can take it with us when we travel in our RV. In the last episode, I built the basic bench work for the layout. In this episode, I'm going to finish the bench work and add a decorative fascia, handholds, and cutouts for control panels. Since this layout is going to live in our RV, I want it to look nice, like a piece of furniture. I decided to splurge on some mahogany for the fascia. This isn't cheap, but thankfully this is a small layout, so I don't need much. If you notice, this board is actually a little taller than the side of the layout. I want the fascia to extend down below the bottom of the layout a little. That should help lock it to the table on the RV. I'll need to cut some pieces of mahogany to go around the whole perimeter. I'm using my compound miter saw to cut the corners at 45 degree angles. I've repositioned the sawhorses so that I can rest the first piece of mahogany on it. This is the piece on the end with the passing siding. I want the top of this piece to be at the same level as the top of the layout. I don't want any screws to show on the outside of the fascia. I'll use some yellow carpenter's glue on the back of the mahogany. I've set some clamps to hold the pieces together. I've used some scrap pieces of wood to keep the clamps from denting the wood that's part of the layout. I put a 1 16th drill bit in my drill and set it so that it will only drill this far. I'm drilling from the inside. Because of the way I set my drill bit, I can be sure that I won't make holes in the outside of the mahogany. Then I can put short screws in for some additional support. I've cut pieces of 1 quarter inch plywood to fit in the recesses on the sides of the layout. I'm doing this to leave space for control panels that will be recessed into the fascia. I'll measure the borders of the control panel insert for the harbor side of the layout and mark it with a pencil. I'm going to cut the thin plywood along these lines. Now that I've cut the plywood, I can glue the pieces that don't need to be removable. I'll leave the piece that's acting as a placeholder for the control panel loose. Now I can glue the mahogany fascia to the layout. I've set some clamps to hold everything together. I'm measuring to make sure that the distance the mahogany hangs down below the pine is the same on both ends. Note that this mahogany board is wider than the one on the end. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. The main difference is that the control panel insert is longer since this will be the main panel. To reduce the chance that I'll snag my finger on a screw under the layout, I'm drilling part way into the pine with a small Forstner bit to recess the screws. Now I have the last piece of the fascia mounted. This one is taller than the others because of the hill I have planned for this end of the layout. The fascia needs to be tall enough to provide some backing for the hill. The mitered corners have a bit of a gap despite my best efforts. I'm going to try something. I'll put a bead of yellow glue into the gap. While the glue is still wet, I'll go over the area with my sander. The sawdust from the sanding has embedded in the glue and filled the seam. Now I just have to make sure that I've sanded all the excess glue off the outside so that it won't get in the way of applying a finish later. This layout is intended to be portable. My wife, Nicole, had a great idea to build some handholds into the layout. I'm measuring to mark where the handholds will go. I want to put a handhold at each corner. I measured my hand and found that the hole needs to be at least 4 inches wide. I've marked two hole centers. Now I'll use a small drill bit to make pilot holes. I'll use a Forstner bit again to make the holes bigger. Using a straight edge, I'll connect the two holes with pencil lines. I'll cut along the pencil lines with my jigsaw to make an oblong opening, again using a clean cut blade. The cut is pretty smooth, but I'll still use my sander to smooth it out some more and round the edges. I'll use a little sandpaper to get the hard to reach areas inside the hole. Now I'll test it. My hand fits. Now I just need to make seven more just like this. I've made the fascia on the sides a little too tall on purpose. Now I need to cut most of it down. 
I'll measure the height from the top of the layout to the current top of the fascia wood. Now I can transfer the measurement to the outside. I've used a straight edge to draw a cut line on the outside of the fascia. The cut line is flat for most of the distance, but slopes up to form the contours of the hill on the tunnel end of the layout. I'll use my jigsaw to follow the cut line. On the end with the tall fascia, I'll wrap the cut line around the corner. Next, I'll use my planer to smooth out the top of the fascia and the flat areas. I'll follow up with my sander. This is a Digitrax UP5 Loconet panel. I want to make sure that I can fit one of these in the space I've allowed for a control panel. With the layout flipped upside down again, I'll use the faceplate from the Digitrax panel to mark out how tall an opening I'll need. If you recall, I left a slot for the control panel insert between the boards on the sides of the layout. I need to make sure that my opening will fall within this space. I'll use my square to mark the edges of the control panel insert slot. I've placed a long level across the bottom of the fascia to act as a straight edge. Now I can measure the distance from the marks I made to the bottom of the level. Now I can transfer the measurements to the outside of the fascia. I need to mark the top, bottom, and edges of the control panel area. It looks like it'll fit within the box that I drew. I've drawn a second box a little smaller and these will be my hole centers for drilling. I'll be using a 1 and 1 quarter inch Forstner bit, so the box is 5 eighths of an inch smaller than the original box. That should put the edges of the Forstner bit right on the edges of the larger box. I'll use a small drill bit to make pilot holes at the hole centers. Then I'll follow with the Forstner bit. Now that I've put holes at all four corners, I can follow the lines with my jigsaw to complete the opening. It pays to go slowly here and make sure that the saw blade stays on the line. Now I'll clean up the opening. I'll start with the sander. I'll use a piece of sandpaper on the inside. Let's test it out. I'll slide the leftover piece of 1 quarter inch plywood into the slot. I may use a different material for the actual control panel, but this shows how it will fit. My Digitrax panel fits inside. The goal is to avoid having any controls sticking out beyond the fascia. Even though the tunnels on this layout are going to be short, I want to make sure to have access to the inside in case a train derails in there. I'll measure the distance from the top of the fascia to the top of the sub road bed. Then I can transfer the dimensions to the outside. Next I'll measure to find the center point of the fascia and make some marks 3 inches to either side of that. I'll position my level along the marks I made to draw a line at the same height as the plywood sub road bed. I'll use my square to mark vertical cut lines at the edges. Just like I did with the control panel, I've drawn a smaller box within a larger box. I'll use a small drill bit to drill pilot holes. Once again, I'll drill the corners with a Forstner bit. I'll use my jigsaw to finish cutting the opening. Now I can use a sander to erase any leftover pencil marks and smooth out the edges of the opening. Some sandpaper works well for the inside. I'm wearing a glove to keep from getting any blisters on my hand. Now for the test. I can reach in pretty well. I'm using the piece of plywood left over from cutting out the harbor as the base for my water. It'll sit on the smaller 1x2 bracing under the layout. Since the bracing under this wood is shorter, I'm using some 1 and 5 8 inch drywall screws to attach the harbor bottom. The harbor bottom is 2 inches below the level of the sub road bed. Now I need to cut the fascia at the harbor mouth. I've positioned my drawbridge to help figure out how much to cut. As it stands right now, the bottom of the bridge is about an inch above the plastic base. I'm going to cut the fascia down to about the same height, even though I plan to replace the bridge base. I'm drawing more contoured cut lines by hand at the end of the bridge. I'll use my jigsaw to make the cut. I'll smooth it out with my sander. Now I'm going to give the whole fascia a light sanding to prepare it for a sealer coat. Once I'm done sanding, I'll go over the entire fascia with a tack rag to get rid of any dust. I'm going to coat the entire fascia with some Verithane Acrylic Clear Semi-Gloss. This should help to protect the wood against spills or if it gets wet when it comes time to make scenery. I'll brush a light coat over the entire fascia. This won't show, but just to be on the safe side, I'm coating the inside of the fascia in the tunnel area too. I've put some more 1x2s on the bottom to give some support if I decide later that I want to add a bottom cover. Also, the pieces that run down the sides will help to hold the control panel. I can just take these screws out and lift this off, 
put the control panel in, and put it back. I brought the benchwork inside for the next phases of construction. The control panel area on this side is larger since I anticipate sitting on this side of the layout when I operate it. Nicole's handhold idea is going to work out really well, I think. This is an overall view from the passing siding end looking toward the hill. The bottom of the harbor is about an inch below the cut in the fascia, which represents the water level. I'm going to use the depth so that I have room to experiment with making simulated water in the harbor. The smaller control panel on this side will mostly be for a throttle plug, but there's room for a little more if I need to add something else. Taking another look at the tunnel access hole, it looks like I should be able to easily reach both tracks. Now that the bench work is complete, I need to make sure it's actually going to fit in the RV. Looks good. I think that's a good place to leave things for now. The bench work is now complete. Next time I'll work on adding roadbed for the track. Thanks for watching.